Today's message from Rev. Christian Sorensen was recorded on November 12th, 2017, and it's titled Abundance, affirming abundance flows through me, blessing all I love. And today's music is from our very own artistic director, Rebecca Jade, and the Seaside Choir. You can come visit us at our new shiny website at SeasideCenter.org, and you can join us in Encinitas, California, where we always have great music, a spirited message, and a joyful, loving, vibrant community that await you. Good morning, Seaside. How are we doing today? All right. right, Well, uh, in honor of Reverend Christian's talk about Camelot, I thought to pick a song that, you know, kind of coincides with the uh, journey, and uh, I picked a song that um, it's kind of a, you know, it was a pop soul song, um, but it kind of encompasses, I think, I think it does, uh, uh, the, the message of the journey, and the song is called Ain't No Stopping Us Now. Here we go. One, two, three, four. There's been so many things that's held us down But now it looks like things are finally coming around We may not always know, know where we're going Ask us where we're going We don't know, but we won't let nothing hold us back We're gonna put ourselves together, polish up our act, day. And if you've ever been held down before, I know you refuse to be held down anymore, yeah. Don't you let nothing, nothing stand in your way, yeah. I want you to listen, listen to every word I say, every word I say. I know you know someone that has a negative vibe And when you're trying to make it, they only push you aside They really don't have nowhere to go Ask them where they're going, they don't know But we won't let nothing hold us back We're gonna put ourselves together, gonna polish up our act, yeah And if you've ever been held down before, I know you refuse to be held down anymore. Don't you let nothing, nothing stand in your way. I want you to listen, listen to every word I say, every word I say. Give us some of that saxophone.
Don't you let nothing, nothing stand in your way, no, no. I want you to listen, listen to every word I say, every word I say. Just like Camelot, right? <laughs> Ain't no stopping us now. We got the groove. Oh, yeah. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. No stopping, no stopping. Ain't no stopping us now. We got the groove. That is Rebecca Jane. Oh, my goodness. Ain't no stopping us now. What a great song. Uh, Got to keep it moving. Got to do it. Okay. Hey, Rebecca said, Christian, you can have anybody you want to sing for your Pledge Sunday. And I said, I want you. You're my favorite. So thank you so much. Of what course. a great song. Thank you. Woo. Ain't no stopping us now. That, that, what a great, that could be our anthem. I, I like that. Wow. Okay. So here we are. We have been in the midst of this pledge program here at Seaside, and we have been taking a look at the Arthurian lore to help just bring home um, the fun in creating the abundance and the wealth in our life. And so the first week, we started off with celebrating Camelot, you know, a tribute to the good that we've got going on in our life, the way in which spirit has shown up and blessed us and graced us. And we also came to recognize is, you know, things are good. They're good. But now isn't there something stirring inside of me, something that wants to be more than this good, something great, something spirit. And so we've been called to go on this quest. We've gone on the quest for this holy grail right here. And it doesn't so much matter that it's a grail we're going after. What it does is it inspires something spiritual, that we're going out on this quest for something deeper, something spiritual, something that is just more of what really is, that is beyond the physical realm. And what we talked about last week is on this quest, we just may run into some dragons. You know the sign beyond this point? There be dragons. And, and so we took a look at our dragons. We faced our dragons. And what we began to do was transform those dragons from those mean, awful, demonic kind of dragons to those that were able to lift us up, that brought the fortune, that brought the longevity, that brought the infinite expression, that brought the gold with it. And so here we are today, sitting down together at the round table. And Ginny, oh my goodness, Ginny and Dennis have been creating these things. And we actually have a round table here and it is, you know, our stage and all these things. Ginny, you're just, you're fabulous. But anyway, the round table with with the double rows in the center is symbolic that there's no head at this table because in those early days, the knights used to fight to get near the head of the table. I am greater than you, so I get to sit closer, you know, to the king. And so Arthur was talking with Merlin and they say, how can we eliminate this? You know, we want to bring forth a new idea where it's not about might is right, but chivalry, that we're all equal. And they came up with the round table. And so Merlin negotiated something with Guinevere's uh, dad, who happened to be a a king. And you have the beautiful Guinevere marrying Arthur. And part of the wedding gift from her dad was the round table. And so there they all are, sitting at the round table. Now, what I want us to understand about this round table is we're all equal. But all equal doesn't mean that we all have the same abilities. You know, we all have our gifts. We all have our our diverse expressions. You know, Lancelot, without a doubt, was the best fighter of them all. But others had expressions to bring. You had Percival and his innocence, or you had Galahad who had his deep spirituality, or you have Gawain, or you have Gerth, or you have uh, Tristan or Bors. You got all these guys and they're sitting around the table and say, you know what? We're equal in our ability to commit. I'm going to make a commitment to give myself full out. I may not be, I may not have as much to give as Lancelot has, or I may not be as spiritual as Galahad or Lancelot or all those guys. But what I am equal at is being a place where the divine is able to download and you can count me in 100% or whatever percent you want to give. And so the reason there is no stop in seaside now, you know, we are on our way is because we've come together and we've rolled up our sleeves. Hey guys, I'm in it. 
You know, I am in this with an equal player. I may not be able to give as much as, but you know what? You can count on my percent because I'm giving as much of a percent, if not more, of what it is I am capable of giving in my life. And we begin to move on this road and we begin to live. We begin to feel a vibrancy. You know, these nights at the round table, they all lived. Man, their life was exciting. It was passionate. It was dynamic. You know, they might not have tomorrow, but you know what? Everybody's going to die, but not everybody's going to live. And when you begin to consider yourself equal in your ability to bring forth spirit, that you're a player here, you begin to live. You begin to move beyond the appearances. You begin to look at those dragons that might be there in your way and say, there ain't no stopping me now. Man, I, I, I am moving on here. You know, there's a story I used to love to share. It's from my school of ministry days. And so it, it was about Jane Diedio. And she, uh, at eight years old, living in the Ozarks, and looking down a long, dusty road and seeing no action. There was nothing going on out there but dust in the Ozarks where she was. She knew at the age of eight, I want out of here. You know, there is more to life than this. Though she was well aware of her responsibility as the oldest sister, not only did she have to t- help take care of the farm, she had to help raise her brothers and her sisters. She wasn't, you know, stepping away from that, but she knew that she was meant for more than that. So her plan first was to get married, to get out of there. That was only the first step. And so she did that. She got married. She got out there. And one of those, she was traveling um, in one summer and she realized without a, like a permanent spot, she couldn't receive mail. And so they saw an abandoned post office. And she said to her husband, you know what? Find out whose place that is. See if we can get that. And he talked. He found they made a deal. And they got the post office. And so she opened it up because she had this idea that I must not be the only one who might need a mailbox. So what I'm going to do is just lock it up. and give everybody who has a mailbox a key so they can come and go whatever hour they want. And we'll just deliver their mail there. And that spot became the first mailbox, etc. USA. By 1981, three years into this project, she had grossed $20 million. And eventually went on UPS, you know, bought it, and now it's called the UPS stores. And so it it did pretty good for her. But it's interesting, UPS wrote, erased the early history. They said it started in, you know, the late 70s, and they bought it now, and look at it now. They left her name out of it. But what I want you to know, she has gone on to head up other corporations. And I share this story because she was someone from the Ozarks who had no more than an eighth grade education, but there was something inside of her that had a desire. She took a look at her life at something she wanted more from. There was something in her that knew that she could deliver it. She had a desire. She had a dream. She created a plan, and she went out there and manifested $20 million in three years. So don't give me your heartache story around here. You know. But Napoleon Hill said, if you can think it and believe it, you can achieve it. Right? If you can think it, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Bottom line. So with God, all things are possible. Jane knew that. You got that? With God, all things are possible? If you really get that statement... Do you get how easy it makes your life? Because the only thing you have to do is get with God. That's it. You got that? You don't have to figure it out. You just got to get with God. Get with the program, folks. Because with God, all things are possible. And so all of a sudden, you've got one of these dragons or one of these difficulties. And you're remembering, I'm sitting at this table. I'm as equal in bringing forth this expression to this world as a Jesus, as a Buddha. You know, it's my thinking that has kind of couched it. But you know what? If uh, the Mother Teresa is out there doing a good thing, I can too. That's right. Because we are all equal at God's table. Tell them I'll call them back later, Rosemary. Uh, I, I just really don't need that call now. Yeah. So, when I'm at the table, we're all equal. Let me get back into the flow here. Where I'll come up with a story. When I run out of things, I'll just give you a story. But, and you may have seen this story this week. Um, it, it was about this 74-year-old guy from Utah. He had been married to his wife for, I think it was 26 years. And she had stage five kidney failure. I mean, she was on dialysis all the time. Not much longer, uh, you know, for this world. And... Um, Thought, what can I do? 
Man, there's a lot of calls going on in this house today. Dottie, tell them I'll call them back later over there too. They really want me. God's got a message for us. So anyway, um, so here we are. We, we, um, th- this guy, 74 years, oh, Utah. His wife is, needs a kidney and she's not a high priority on the donor list. But you know what? He said, that ain't going to stop me. And so he's not quite as swift on a computer as I am. And if you know me, I got nothing on the computer. So... <laughs> So what does he know how to do? He goes out and gets a sandwich board sign. Marv, you got this? And he starts walking the streets. Need a kidney for my wife. He starts walking these streets and almost immediately people are calling what kind of blood, how can I help, what can I do, can I help fund it, all these things. And he just keeps going with it knowing. And three weeks into this program of walking the streets in this small town in Utah, he gets a call from someone who was aware of this and um, their partner had died and wanted to leave the kidney to his wife. And on Monday, she had the kidney transplant. And uh, he is saying, hey, if I get just five more years, 10 more years with my wife, I'm, it's, a, it's a miracle. There ain't no stopping ya. Yeah, that's right, you know. Yeah. Where your attention goes, we know, is where the energy flows and form follows. I mean, you know, we know it. Spirituality about that, we know it. Mystics have talked about it. Science is proving that. You know, Dispenza is big these days, the scientific proof. You know, those neurons that, you know, fire together, wire together, you know, you create those neural pathways. Anything is possible if you're choosing to believe that and put your faith in and realize that you are not bound by your past. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to believe. I'm going to take this dream. I'm going to hold on to that. And you take your dream and you begin to embrace that and see it and feel it. Does it turn you on? Does it get you excited? Is it in alignment with who you are? Does it empower you? Does it make you stretch? Does it make you grow? Do you become that place where you're reaching out for the presence of God? Does it help others? I got to tell you, Seaside's vision is that we are a thriving spiritual community that works for everyone. You know, it's a spiritual nexus that inspires us to live our dreams. If I got to put on a sandwich board and walk the streets to keep Seaside going, you can count me in on that. You know, I will do what it takes. I will stand here once a year and say, guys, it's time to roll up our sleeves and say, we got to do this. So you'll put together that plan. But I want you to know that Seaside continues. You heard these stories of healing. Oh, my goodness. Attila, bless you. My heart just, I just, it's so good to hear you standing and looking vibrant and alive and dynamic. That is wonderful. Thank you for that. Daniel. Brilliant. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's just, it was a joy watching you come through the foundation class and finding peace and coming into the balance and to share that. You know, th- these are the things you don't see that are going on. Our prayer requests, we get 2,000, more than 2,000 prayer requests came through our center this year that we prayed on. You know, we are making a difference. This is about healing. It is about life transformation. You don't hear about those things because you kind of keep them private. I got to get permission, you know, before I share these stories because it is confidential. But what's going on here? Do you realize how many people have come through this sanctuary this year? If there's more than 300 on average on a Sunday morning and another 50 at least on Wednesday nights times 52 and then you throw in our special events, that's over 20,000 people that have sat in these seats this year. That is what we are supporting to make a difference. And we talk about our children and what we're sending out into the world. When people drive onto this campus, you know, there aren't any other campuses of spirit centers for spiritual living south of, I know, Orange County somewhere. This is it. And when you drive on, people say, wow, it feels good. I walked the labyrinth. I sat by the fountains. I came into the sanctuary and it's beautiful. Not every religious science place has Wicca altars in them, you know? <laughs> You know, the things that are going on, you know, in a couple of weeks, we, we are helping to house and feed and take care of those that are in transitional housing. They don't have a house and food these days. And we are creating a space for a couple of weeks with them. Sandy and Sonny, bless you two for championing that, that service. <laughs> Truly wonderful. You know, Callie and our Seaside Sisters, whenever she throws an event, there's at least 100 uh, women that show up. That's only half the population, you know? And the difference that they're making with the environment and bringing forth these concepts, bringing Seaside, keeping Seaside on the edge of what's possible. And if that isn't enough, the men got to have their group. This Saturday, you know, Ray Holder, the 30 guys are getting together to share that we have the choir. Look at, you got two dozen people that have been here all day working for weeks. 
to, to help us celebrate. See, Seaside is a spiritual community. You know, you can watch it online, and I love you guys at home, and don't forget to be part of this pledge opportunity today. We know you're there, but I gotta tell you, there is something special about being in this crew, within this crowd, in this tribe, in this clan, and this family, and we are here because we are willing to roll up our sleeves and say, you know what? There's no stopping us. Those mountains may be high to climb, and there may be bumps, but you know what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. You know, you know, Prince um, EA Marv, you want to roll this? Uh, it's two minutes uh, of a uh, longer. What, you clip. Want? what is your dream? What ignites that spark? You can't kind of want that. You gotta want it with every part of your whole heart. Will you struggle? Yeah, yeah, you will struggle. No way around it. You will fall many times, but who's counting? Just remember, there's no such thing as a smooth mountain. If you want to make it to the top, then there are sharp ridges that must be stepped over. There will be times you get stressed and things you get depressed over. But let me tell you something. Steven Spielberg was rejected from film school three times. Three times, but he kept going. The television execs fired Oprah, said she wasn't fit for TV, but she kept going. Critics told Beyonce that she couldn't sing. She went through depression, but she kept going. Struggle and criticisms are prerequisites for greatness. That is the law of this universe and no one escapes it. Because pain is life, but you can choose what type. Either the pain on the road to success or the pain of being haunted with regret. You want my advice? Don't think twice. We have been given a gift that we call life. So don't blow it. You were not defined by your past. Instead, you were born anew in each moment. So own it now. Sometimes you gotta leap and grow your wings on the way down. You better get the shot off before the clock runs out because ain't no overtime in life. No do-over. And I know I sound like I'm preaching or speaking with force but if you don't use your gift then you sell not only yourself but the whole world short. So what invention do you have buried in your mind? What idea? What cure? What skill do you have inside to bring out to this universe? Uni meaning one. Verse meaning song. You have a part to play in this song. So grab that microphone and be brave. Sing your heart out on life stage. You cannot go back and make a brand new beginning. But you can start now and make a brand new ending. That's Prince. You can start right now to make a brand new ending. But if you're arguing for your limitations, they're yours. At least that's what Richard Bach says in his book, Illusions. You argue for your limitations. That is what people are doing. But what we are told, at least in Deuteronomy, is that it is God that gives us the power to succeed. It is God that gives us the power to achieve. It is God that gives us the power to achieve success. That is what we are told, and it is imperative that we continue to put spirit first in our life because we will hit those mountains that have the peaks. We will hit those times of challenges, and it is easy to fall back and think, my past is my like destiny, but you know what? Your past has no power over you unless you have given it the power over you. You have what it takes to redirect this energy that is flowing through you. You argue that it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You say that it is. It is. You get to decide, but you need to put spirit first. You know, we're told that, you know, to Honor the Spirit, honor God, honor the Lord with your tithes, with your first fruits of increase, and your barn will be filled with plenty, and the presses will be bursting forth with new wine. You got that? Bursting forth. Sounds like a bonanza. You know, bursting forth. Abundance will be yours if you continue to honor that presence. But what happens is you begin to think, oh no, these dragons are real. You heard Kim Jarrett say, you know what? I... I, I I don't have income, but I'm not going to let up on spirit and ends up having a down payment on a house. Well, hello, count me in on that. You know, this is how it works. I am telling you how you can have that work in your life, but you got to believe. You've got to know. You've got to stop arguing for your limitations. You take a look at um, uh, people are struggling. They think they either can have this or they can have that. You know, masterful manifestors. They, they realize that, you know, you don't have to, Make a choice between having a wonderful family life and a successful business. You can have both. You know, you don't have to decide between love and, and manifesting. You can have both. 
Do you get that? It's not like you have to struggle and give up your time and your life and give up play and fun. You can have play and fun and a wonderful business expression. You know, you can have both. It's not a matter of one or the other. It's okay to eat your cake, you know? It, it has been given to you and the Masterful Manifestors realize that, you know what, you count me in and they're willing to bet on themselves, okay? Betting on yourselves means, you know what, I, I know that I am worth it. I am entitled. So, you know, I, I am willing to go with the commission here. You know, if there's nothing there and I generate it, I'm entitled to part of that. I'm going to share in the profits. I'm going to share in the stock options. I'm going to share in the commissions. And, you, you know, a regular paycheck's good. Man, don't get me wrong. I, I keep them coming. But what happens with those that struggle is they sell their time for a paycheck. They sell their hours for money. And there are only so many hours in a day. There's a ceiling on it. Do you get that? It's pretty hard to become abundant and free with only so many hours. But the masterful manifestors know that they are a divine conduit, just as we are all equal at this table, to be that place where spirit wants to show up in life. But you got to know you're worthy. You got to know that you're equal. You're equal. You got that? You know, but some people don't think that. You know, Rosedale does. But, you know, when you came into this world, it's not like you were stamped worthy, worthy. God's not doing it. Worthy. Oh, unworthy. Blink. Worthy. Unworthy. Oh, yuck. (laughs) It didn't go like that. We all came here as an expression of spirit, equal, to bring forth the good in our life. That's the way that works. And whether you're worthy or you're not, it's your choice. It's your story. You're the storyteller in your life. I was in Montana a couple of weeks ago. I was watching the squirrels gather the nuts out of the pine cones. And they, were, and they were taking them. And I don't know where they were taking them, but they were storing them up. I saw a couple of their stashes. They were getting ready for winter. None of them that I could notice cared whether you thought they were worthy or not worthy. That would never enter into their thinking. They knew that winter was coming and that they better gather as many of those nuts that they could get to make it through the winter. It's only the most brilliant of the creatures of this world begin to create stories that they're not worthy to experience the abundance that nature has for us. Why are we doing that to ourselves? I can't answer that. But... There's a wonderful writings from um, Mary Ann Williamson. You probably know it. You probably, maybe even have it memorized because it's used all the time. But it just seems so appropriate when it comes to worthiness because we're all worthy sitting at this table. We are all equal having that opportunity to give at the level in which we have chosen. And so our deepest fear, she said, is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are more powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, just as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us, and it is not in just some, but it's in every one. So when something happens in your life, boom, how is it you respond? You know, that's the story I'm talking about. When the dragon shows up, how do you respond? You get confronted, you think, ready for a fight? Do I need to prove myself? Do I need to defend myself? Are they attacking me? Or are they coaching me? Ooh, yeah, maybe uh, they are assisting me. Maybe they're being kind to me to point out and hold up a mirror. It comes down to how is it that I'm going to respond to this? Because things are always going to be happening in this world. And my goodness, you know, here at Seaside this year, is, it's been a journey. Um, you know, within our nation, we have seen so much violence, whether it was in Sutherland, Texas, a couple of weeks ago in the church, whether it was in New York with the violence, the, the driving, uh, whether it was in Charlottesville, the, in, the, in the, that whole experience, Las Vegas. Not only has there been a, an explosion of violence, the extreme historic weather that has hit Houston and Puerto Rico and Florida. People have turned to seaside looking for 
answer, support, and comfort. And we have been able to stand here with a different twist than those that want to point blame and attack and get political. We're, you know, we're here to hold a light and say, hey, what's going on? What needs to be understood here? What is coming up from our collective consciousness? What is going on in our culture that people are responding in this kind of way? That the earth is responding in this kind of way? What is it that we need to know rather than pointing fingers and blaming this person and that person in that situation? They are a lot bigger than one individual. There is something that is stirring in humanity's consciousness that we need to pay attention to to. Yeah, and people just keep coming to Seaside in these times of pain when we continue to be here. And so I just thank you from the fullness of my heart of you for your support. And so this is the time of the year that we say, you know what, guys, we're going to be here in 2018. It's up to you. You know, it's up to you to get into partnership with God, where it says in Malachi, you know, bring your gifts to the storehouse of God. Prove me this now, says the Lord of hosts. God's saying, I'm challenging you. Bring your gifts to the storehouse of mine so there may be food in it. And I will open up the windows, it says, and pour forth blessings until you say it's enough. You got that? It pours forth blessings until you're the one say, whoa, that's enough, God. That's too much good. I can't handle it anymore. That's a pretty good promise. How do you get there? You take that dream. And you run it through that check I just gave you, like the seaside. You know, does it turn me on? You bet it turns me on with what we're doing here at Seaside, being able to share those stories when headlines are looking different. That's what new thought does, is it shares something different. Is it in alignment with my values? Oh, you bet. We are a caring, kind community. We are here for one another. It is a place without judgment. We are life affirming that this place has its arms open as we are on our spiritual paths. Does it stretch me? Oh, you bet it stretches me. You know, it's like, I, I, and do you, do you reach out to a higher power? You know I do. I, I don't know what 2018 is going to look like. All I know is for 35 years, spirit has supported this moment. So the community has continued on even further down the road. And when it's not here, then I get the message. That's the end uh, of, of it or me or whatever it is. But what I continue to realize is that I've got to live with a sense of trust and a higher power that continues to fulfill the vision that you have been entrusted with. And does it bring blessings to others? You bet it does. We continue. 20,000 people came through this here this year. And I don't even know how many are watching us at home, but I know it's hundreds, if not a thousand every week. We're making a difference. Our classes are packed. Our, our, our workshops have just been huge this year. And it's because individuals in moments like this say, hey, count me in. And that's what I'm going to ask you in a moment. How can we count you in in 2018? It's your choice. I'm not telling you you have to give and what you give. What I want you to know is Seaside, as Kim Chera shared with you, gives 10%. That's a tithe. You know, if it's 11 or 5, that's not a tithe. Tithe means 10. 10 is like a power of 1 times 10. It is a spiritual number. 1. I'm one with God. You know, am I willing to be one with God? And I just know everything that comes in goes back to God. It's spirit that gives me the power of wealth. It's me who's going to plant those seeds. Am I going to honor that in my life? You know, and if that 10 doesn't work, find something that does work. Say 5% and say, okay, I'm going to be consistent because that's the key here is consistent. You proportionally say, you know what? When it comes in, 5% is going to God. And if I lose whatever my job is, I'm not going to lose my faith here. You know, uh, I, love will never fail you until you fail to love. Life is never going to let you down until you fail life. And so it is an opportunity, you know, count me in. You know, I, I'm going to stretch here and I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be in partnership with God. And what happens is you begin to break your addiction to money. You begin to recognize that money is not where the power is. The employer is not where the power is. You are living in an infinite sea that is forever seeking expression in infinite kinds of ways. And you may be giving in one spot and you want to give to a place that represents spirit in your life. I mean, it's nice to give to Aunt Anne if she's sick or something. That's good. You want to live in the flow. But I'll tell you, what? It is that which represents spirit, and 10% is that spiritual number. Am I able to give a dime on every dollar? Yeah, if you're giving 10%, that's a buck on every $10. $10 on every hundred. You know, on every thousand, that's a hundred dollars. You know, on a 10,000, that's a thousand. If you're committed to a proportionate giving, and those can be trusted with a little, can be trusted with a lot, but there is no large or small in the mind of God. It is in my argument for size that makes the difference here. It's all spirit. And when you're able to step into this energetic flow, spirit shows up in ways you didn't expect. But you gotta be willing to give of your time and your energy. Uh, you know, my, uh, Callie's in my story. You know, I, I've sh I haven't shared this in a while, but, you know, in 1998, I was elected president of religious science. I was made the first community spiritual leader. 
full-time job and they don't pay you. So uh, <clears throat> back then, they do after me, but you know, back, back then, you know, so I'm full-time seaside, full-time here and no pay. They did give me a little plastic globe at the end of four years and said, thank you. That's nice. I got it. I appreciate it. But I wasn't in it because, one, I was passionate. It turned me on. It was in alignment with who I am. It stretched me as a person. It became that place where I continued to reach out to God and I made a difference in people's lives. And so I did that. What was interesting, this was in the spring of 98. In the fall of 98, we bought this place with no money. So that, that, was, uh, you know, that, that was definitely a stretch. I served for four years. It took us four years before we could move into this place. It's kind of strange the way that works. Callie and I were blessed in Del Mar with a little beach cottage that we somehow got in the middle of the real estate recession, and we sold it for an amount that literally changed our financial light world for life. And we built a dream home just a mile from here. I, 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 it doesn't matter if it comes from your father, your parents-in-laws or, or, or from God or from some tech company that hit the big time. We were blessed by that. And even more powerful than that was Kelly and I had been trying for five years to have a child. And it was a lot of fun. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it was at the, um, in that time that we had also put in for adoption and that we got a call uh, that our son was coming into this world and we raced to the hospital. I was there and I was able to cut his umbilical cord and we took him home the next morning. You know, So I share these stories because we're supporting Spirit's work and if you're looking for it to come back where you're giving from, that's not the way it is because you, Spirit's like all of it. But if you continue to put spirit first, then what happens? It shows up here and it shows up here and it shows up here in ways that instrument. I can assure you, I pray for everyone here at Seaside. I continue to live in a prayerful state here for all of us. And, and so as you begin to get into partnership and co-creation and expression with, with God, you realize that you're breaking your addiction to small thinking around finances, that what tithing does is it takes the blinders off. And as you begin to say, I'm in partnership with spirit and that I'm going to give and I'm going to be consistent. And also what's as important as your consistency is the consciousness in which you give. I'm not asking you to give because I'm telling you that you're working, you better do it. I'm not working with guilt. If we did, we would have built a new place here. But you know what I am doing is giving you the opportunity to let spirit prove itself in your life that this does work. Get into this commitment with spirit for six months and say, you know what, Seaside, count me in. I, I, I know you're planning for 2017 or 2018, and we are able to put together a viable financial plan to support the vision of being that spiritual light in the North County of San Diego and on the airwaves because of this moment. And so I, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to have Rebecca sing, and then I'm going to ask you to fill out your card that, that is in there. But I want you to listen to your heart and you know, just think for a moment that you know, what is spirit worth to me in my life? A couple bucks a day? You know, maybe 25, 50 bucks a week? You know, can Jerry hurt a thousand bucks a month? You know, what I want you to do is to figure out what that is maybe annually and divide it by 12 and say, you know what, God, I'm going in partnership. You know, Seaside, I know you're gonna be praying with me on this card. It comes to me just like those cards I've shown you. I've been praying every week. I want you to stretch a little bit more. I can assure you I've, I've stepped beyond the 10%. You know, 10% is training wheels. As I said, it's easier to figure out than 13.7. You know, it, it is like a, a spot for you to move so you can live in the flow. Because as you begin to honor that spirit's dream that is within you, you will be abundant because spirit will abundantly be flowing through you. It's about flow, guys. I can tell you stories about the Dead Sea and it's no good down there and Galilee's beautiful because the water flows. I got lots of them, but I, I'm running out of time. It, it, <laughs> So I'm going to, to pray. Becca and her mom are going to sing. And, um, and then I'll talk about filling out the card. So just put your hand on your heart right now. And just feel that presence, that life force, that, that joy, that spirit, that possibility of a financial freedom, of a joy. Knowing that I am worthy. I'm spirit. Spirit is tending to do something really good through me. There's a dream I have been entrusted with. There's a power. There's a presence that is unfolding in this moment and it is grand. And I've been asked to sit at this table as equal as a Gates or a Buffett or, or any other of those giants that are here. And I'm going to choose to stretch this year. You know, in the program, there's a step chart. You're at five. Take a look at what six looks like. 
on a weekly or a monthly basis. But I know right now, Spirit, I am ready and worthy to experience more. And my possibility of experiencing that is as equal as that eight-year-old in the Ozarks who had nothing earthly going for her other than she had an equal connection to the divine. So I'm willing to listen to my heart and say yes to Spirit in this moment to know that I am in this co-creative expression with the divine. Hello, this is Christian, and if you've been enjoying Joyous Podcasts, I encourage you to support us so we can continue to be here. Your gifts is what allows this to continue to be made available for free for everyone. It now goes to more than 55 countries around the world, and it's because you have taken advantage of the opportunity to go to Joyous Podcasts and make a financial contribution. And because of that, you have made a difference. Your gifts make it possible for us to continue sharing this freely. Share this with your friends and have them go to joyouspodcast.com. Joyous blessings to you.